Hey, it's Craig Ansell from the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. If you've listened for some time, you know I strongly recommend coaching and mentoring within the workplace. Today's show, though, made me think, and it's titled Mentor or Tormentor. Join me to find out the inspiration for today's show and also for you to perform a self-check if you're involved in mentoring or considering it. Don't miss today's show. I was an engineer and in 2008 lost my job due to the economic collapse. Jobs were scarce. I didn't know where to turn to get help updating my resume. Online services and coaches charge hundreds, even thousands of dollars. I took matters into my own hands and learned how to craft interview winning resumes. Shortly later, I landed a job with a Fortune 500 company. I have helped many achieve similar success. Now I share my tips to create interview winning resumes, interviewing excellence, and high performance growth strategies on my podcast, Career Growth Made Easy. Welcome back to the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Craig Ansell, and we're rolling into episode 162, Mentor or Tormentor. Dun, dun, dun. Today's show title is reference to a friend of mine and a colleague, Matt Williams. We're working together and co-mentoring. Speaking of mentoring, I've got a couple episodes I'm going to mention because they're great sessions to fall back to and learn more about the different types of mentoring and the ways that you can give and receive. Let me pull those up for you. Through the magic of the digital pause button, I was able to stop and look up my content calendar, and I found the two episodes I prior spoke about with mentoring. That's episode 70, titled Mentors Help You Grow, and episode 93, Multiply Your Mentorship. You might want to go back after today's show and list the episodes 70 and 93. I'll make sure there are links in the show notes that you can click to remind you. But neither of those shows is going to help you if we don't get through today's show title, Mentor or Tormentor. Dun, dun, dun. As I mentioned, the inspiration came from a friend and colleague of mine. And I kind of wondered why he mentioned that. Are you a mentor or tormentor? And we talked briefly, but at the same time, I have heard horror stories when it comes to mentoring. Ah. I don't know if you've had mentoring sessions and if you were the lead or if you were the recipient. But in all reality, what is today's show about? I think it's about listeners. You. Do you seek out mentors or have they been assigned to you? If you were to seek them out, you'll likely be looking for growth and to learn new techniques, new processes, and improve your work habits, maybe work more efficiently. But what if the mentor was assigned to you? Hey, you know what, Craig? We've noticed that you've been really slow in this area here, and in order to help improve your efficiency, we're assigning this mentor to you. Okay, great. So instead of lifting me up and telling me the areas I'm doing well with, you lead right in with, we see that you're deficient and slow in this area. We're going to go ahead and assign someone to you to help improve you. Well, I don't know about you, but first of all, that doesn't sound very appetizing. And as human nature has it, I might even be defensive. I don't know about you when you're told even though you've been working hard at something, giving it your all, that you're not doing enough, you're not producing enough, you're not fast enough, you're not efficient enough. So we're going to give you someone to help you. I think a lot of mentoring and even co-mentoring, as I'll briefly talk about today, is about finding people that you're compatible with. And that's where today's show title comes into play. If you're assigned someone that has an incredible amount of experience, maybe vast knowledge on a particular topic, subject, role, or task set, and there to work with you to improve you. That's great. But are you compatible from a communication standpoint, from a personality standpoint? How about psychologically? 
if you're not going to be compatible, things and conversations may rub you the wrong way. And that's where the tormentor part comes in. If you cringe when you heard you're being assigned a mentor, is it the person, the personality that caused you to cringe? Or is it simply the fact that you, like me in this example, became defensive because you were told you weren't up to task, you weren't up to snuff, and you weren't performing strongly enough? Either or both of those situations can certainly impact you. I know over the years, those types of discussions have impacted me when I thought I was doing the best for my role, the best for my company, and I got a substandard performance review, or I had a closed-door discussion about my performance. Those things certainly can set you off the wrong way and become defensive, right? Talking about mentoring, though, if you were the one that sought out the mentor, good for you. Perhaps your company, your job, your group doesn't have an actual existing mentoring process or mentoring team. Maybe you bringing it up as an inquiry sparks some interest from your supervisor, your manager, or the company. Maybe you could help form one. Hmm. With that said, you could share ideas in your group about what mentoring meant to you, at least your viewpoint, and we'll find out what it means to others. You might find that while you're looking for a mentor, you actually have skills and capabilities that can help others. In that case, you could become the mentor, believe it or not, and you would be helping somebody called the mentee. In certain situations, like I talked about in my two other episodes, there's actually a process called co-mentoring. That's where you learn from each other. You both have areas of knowledge, areas of strength, along with some areas that could use some improvement. And they should complement each other so that, let's say, one of you works in the office setting and directs projects, and another one of you works in the field and executes the projects, right? Working together, you can complement each other's skills. That would be a good example. But if you're both strong in the same areas, there might be a little friction there because although you would have things in common, the purpose of mentoring is to grow one another or co-mentoring to grow one another, you might actually find conflict. One person trying to show up the other person or show off to the other person. And that is not what mentoring or co-mentoring is about. I mentioned earlier with mentoring, things like personality, views, the person's drive, their energy, all come into play. It's kind of like sitting next to someone for the first time and introducing yourself to find out if you have something in common with them. It could be you have something in common personally or professionally, from things like sports to hobbies to interests. With work, it could be job titles or job functions that you perform. Having similar abilities is always a great way for an icebreaker. It can give you what you need, that networking tie, to help you share information and find out more about others, their job roles, what they do on a daily basis. You could share, if you have a similar job role, the way you perform your job and your tasks, and maybe together you can find ways to boost each other's performance. In doing so, maybe you'll reduce some of the workload and chaos that happens throughout your work days. Now, that sounded pretty good, didn't it? But what if we flip the tables? On the other hand, let's say your company mandated, ooh, that's an ugly word, mandated or ordered that you be paired up with a mentor. What if it's a mentor you're not compatible with? For example, the mentor might be too assertive, maybe even aggressive. That could turn into you feeling pushed around. And that, in the end, comes into part of our show title, a tormentor relationship. It's where you make efforts to avoid interacting with the person, you shorten the meetings when possible, and even go so far as to cancel them when it comes to mentoring because you don't enjoy them or feel that they're beneficial. So I've talked a little bit about both sides, the mentoring side, a couple different ways to look at it, and the tormentoring side. I do highly support coaching and highly support mentoring whether it's paid coaching and mentoring or donating time. 
The key thing, though, for both sides, both parties to benefit is you need to be compatible. It needs to be done in a caring, giving way. So with regards to today's show, if you're in a mentoring relationship, I commend you. I'm glad that you're there, regardless of how you got there. I hope that you're finding it beneficial. If it's a new relationship, you still might be learning your ropes and learning your ways with that person, well, well, with each of your personalities, how you mesh, if there's any potential minor conflicts. Hopefully there's not any major conflicts, which will cause you to do what I just mentioned about shortening your sessions, breaking the meetings, even canceling them just because you don't feel comfortable or compatible. What if you've had mentoring sessions going on for quite some time on a regular basis, maybe weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, and let's say they've been happening for six months or a year or longer. When is it time to pull the cord to stop the mentoring session and say, let's take a pause, let's take a reflection. If you're meeting and you're not getting value out of the mentoring sessions, that can be a sign that it's time for change. If your mentor is willing to meet with you and talk about kind of a self-assessment progress in the last three to six weeks, last three to six months, if you both feel it's become somewhat stale or stagnant, maybe you both agree that you've learned a great amount from each other, which is fantastic. That's the whole point. But that neither one of you have something more to give the other, that your growth has kind of plateaued or tapered off. Nothing wrong with that. The mentoring, the mentorship, did what it was supposed to. But now it's time to kind of say, hey, let's go back to our mentoring pools and let's see if we can team up with other people. Maybe we can find a new mentor-mentee relationship, or maybe either one of us could be co-mentors to new folks. So think about that, whether you're in the school system or working. Where could you find mentors? Where could you find coaches? Do you feel that you need that you're a mentee needing and interested in certain growth, certain help? Nothing wrong with exposing yourself and saying, I'm proud to speak up and say, I'd like to learn more about topic X. I'd like to learn more about this particular process. Being open, transparent is very important. It can put you in a delicate situation and maybe make you feel uncomfortable being transparent. So you need to do it cautiously is my suggestion. You don't just go out there and blurt out and say, I know I have all these weaknesses uh, or maybe extreme words. I failed at this. I failed at that. There's a show also I had talking about extreme words. And if you use those extreme words, they're usually tied to emotional feelings. Go back and listen to my show on extreme words. I'll see if I can pull that up for you as well. But where do you feel that emotional tie? Where do you feel the need, something that's nagging at you, bothering you, that you might want to get some mentoring or coaching from? If you can identify that, then that will help you source out a mentor or co-mentor relationship. If a company is going to assign you a mentor, hopefully it is successful and it doesn't become the latter, the tormentor relationship. And if your company's assigned it, there are delicate ways you can go about communicating to that assigned mentor or to leadership to talk to them about the incompatibility or the potential challenges you're facing. Possibly, if your company is flexible and willing to listen, they'll reassign you to a new mentor, someone that you're more compatible with and that can get more progress done at a faster rate of time. On the other hand, if things are going really, really well with your mentor or co-mentor relationship, there's no reason to stop. As long as you can document the growth and just in a few bullet points and feel that you're successful, that you're moving forward, keep that relationship going. In those two other shows I mentioned, episodes 70 and 93, first titled Mentors Help You Grow and Multiply Your Mentorship, I give you some different different views food for thought about how mentoring works, co-mentoring, and multiplying your mentorship was a really cool show because mentoring does not always have to be the traditional one-on-one. I really break the boundaries there and talk about multiplying mentorship in that show 93. If you're interested in mentoring or you're already active and you're like, Craig, things have become a little stale. I'm looking for something to juice it up, a little bit dynamic, a little bit more value, not only for me to receive, but to give check out episode 93. And then finally, through the magic of 
digital pause. I'm going to come right back to you with that other episode talking about the emotional extreme words. Okay, I'm back. And I can't believe it when I searched my editorial calendar. But it goes all the way back to episode 13, one of my first shows, Extreme Words Always and Never. My point behind that show, if you feel yourself using those extreme words, always and never, or some other words, some trigger words, if you will, that are in that show description or show discussion, you might realize those are some areas that are sensitive to you. They could be keywords, trigger words, like I said, that might be tells for you, showing that there's some areas of sensitivity, maybe some areas that you might want to get coaching or mentoring in to kind of strengthen yourself. Maybe those extreme words won't always be as sensitive to you. It's good to know about them, but it's better to plan, learn, and take action to improve. So for today's show, Mentor versus Tormentor, I hope it has you know, shed some light on you and your situation, whether you're in a mentoring relationship or considering one, and to be aware and be cautious if you are assigned a mentorship relationship, because it's very important that you be compatible with each other. Otherwise, it can actually push the conversation and the discussion in the negative direction. So if you're concerned about your performance, if you have mentoring groups, I recommend you cautiously and respectfully reach out. That way you might have a greater opportunity for better alignment with a mentor-co-mentor relationship than being assigned one. I am Craig Ansell from the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. Hope you have a blessed week ahead and please check the show notes for the other show links. Talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media, at Craig Ansell on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.